My name is Martha Medrano. I go by Marlin. I'm a California uh, delegate for representing District 29. So you just came back from DNC? I did, yes. Explain. Yes, um, we went out uh, and had the opportunity to participate in the DNC this week. Uh, and it was very, um, it was a great experience in the fact that we were able to see and uh, learn from what was happening on the inside, you know, and being able to participate with that. Was that your first time being a delegate? Yes, this was my first time being a delegate. Um, it's really the first time that uh, I've been involved in politics before the primary, to be honest. And really the, the only reason that, that I got as involved was the fact that I, Bernie was running. You know, the idea of being able to have someone with such integrity to actually run um, really brought us out and, and made us get involved further than we would have uh, in any other opportunity. You wouldn't have got involved if it wasn't for Bernie Sanders? Correct. Why? Well, because unfortunately with, with the things that are happening and, and the politicians, it's, we have a, a big distrust in, in what they say and what they do. Um, you know, unfortunately in my experience, they'll say anything to get elected and then really when it comes down to it, it's, it's really hard to get into contact with them or hold them accountable for the things that they, just, that they had promised us originally. Um, and with Bernie Sanders, he has one of the ones with the most integrity. He says it how it is and we believe what he says and, and, that's, and that goes a long way for us. So tell us the um, emotional roller coaster, the joy, the thoughts, feelings that you went through through the four days of being at the DNC? Well, you know, we went in very hopeful, angry, of course, but very hopeful um, with, with trying to make an impact and trying to reach across the aisle and speak to Hillary delegates and being able to give them our opinion and where we're coming from and, and really not making it you know, a Hillary versus Bernie thing, but more of a, a country thing. This isn't a political thing. It's more of our country. We have, don't we have the same ideas? Don't we have the same goals and the end goal that we're trying to unify around, you know, and really trying to come to the table at that? And unfortunately, that was not what we were greeted with. It was very condescending and it was very like, um, great, are you ready to submit? You know, are you ready to um, vote for, for Hillary? It doesn't matter what happened, let's, let's, we need to unite. And, and it's really offensive for, you know, it's, it's really hard to have a conversation and really be open-minded and truly, really trying to, you know, unify with people that don't give us the respect for all of the work that we've done because we've been working for months, you know, building a network, educating ourselves, evolving our ideas and really trying to be educated and be the most progressive and the most enlightened that we can be to affect our, our you know, our positions, um, to be, to arrive and speak with people that have no idea what's going on with the policies that we're supporting, you know, that, that just want us to fall in line and support a candidate because she's the first woman. I've been called sexist because I'm not supporting Hillary Clinton and that's definitely not the way to get us to uh, be open to these conversations. So it was, it was, it was an eye-opening. Eye so you mentioned uh, policies and unifying and issues. Yes. Can you connect the dots between the three? Or? Yes, of course. Well, you know, we went in with, uh, as you know, we were strong Bernie supporters and a lot of the policies on his platform are, are something that we we're very passionate about, you know, um, pro-choice, uh, anti-fracking, overturning Citizens United, no on the TPP. These are things that we are not able to we don't have the time and you know the luxury of putting pushing these off these are things that need to be addressed and affected now and these are the things that we're passionate about and unfortunately there was a, we ran into a lot of people that weren't even aware of these issues that weren't aware of what these things stand for uh, and how important it is for us to make immediate effects now so that was a lot of the uh, the conversations that we were trying to have so why these issues matter now well our, our globe doesn't have time for us to continue with fracking you know, our, our, our countries and our people and our working class can't afford to deal with TPP and then having, you know, trying to undo it from the back, you know, from, you know, from behind. We don't have that luxury. You know, Citizens United, we've seen what a disaster that is and having, you know, money in our, in our political system and how that affects it. We, we can't continue that way. Bernie will change the way that politics are, are done from here forward because he was able to successfully run on, uh, on a clean platform in the sense that he did not take any corporate money and was funded by his constituents and, and I think that that's that's where we need to move forward to. Could you share with us some of the activities that you were involved with or you noticed or you saw in the arena? Yes. Uh, Bernie's delegates or those who were there and their issues weren't heard? Yes, of course. I was part of the very active California delegates um, that we were not there, you know, as, as I mentioned to a Hillary um, 
delegate who was upset that we were cheering and chanting and um, being, you know, rowdy, if you want to call it, uh, was upset and was and, and said something to effect that I'm here. I paid a lot of money to be here. I paid a lot of money to see this. And was I, it like five thousand dollars. Yeah, it was in that ballpark. Yes, and I explained to her, well, the constituents for my district raised a lot of money to get me here, and they did not get me here to clap along to this show. They get, they got me here to raise awareness on the issues, and that's precisely what I'm going to do. So I kindly asked her, hey, if you don't like it, you're going to have to move because this is what this is what the agenda is for this week long. So it was it was really a reality check, you know, for all these people to they were confused with under this brush of unity that they were painting, and they didn't understand why we were not united, why we were fighting it back, and we got a lot of you know love and support from other delegations from the smaller states because they were taking strength from what we were doing, you know, and saying, you know, we're, we, we're getting bullied by the other delegates in our delegations, but we get strength from seeing California because they put us back in a corner, you know, in the dark where we can be very effective and very, it seemed very well, but they could hear us. So that's definitely something that we use to our advantage. So let me ask you this question. Are you a Bernie bust or a Bernie or, or green? You know, I am definitely a Bernie or bust in the sense that if, you know, if any way there's any possibility that we can vote for him, I'm all for that. Um, as of this moment, it's a long road to November, but I, uh, as of this moment, I'm not going to vote for any candidate that is, doesn't understand the threat of Citizens United, who is not anti-fracking, who is not anti the TP, who is not, you know, no on the TPP. I, I'm not going to support any delegate. And, you know, Hillary can say what she wants to say, but she's going to need to earn my vote. And as of now, she has not done a very good job at it. All right. And, um... So moving forward, just like you said, November is not here yet. Yes. Uh, what are your aspirations for the future? For the future in general? Um, well, honestly. For the future, let's say three months, six months, a year, two years. OK. So immediate immediate uh, future, uh, the, uh, my aspirations is to get back into my neighborhood, get back into my district and my community and make a direct effect. Continue raising awareness, continue knocking on doors and building our network of volunteers and seeing how we can contribute and give back to our community. That's immediate. And that's going to be consistent. So starting there and continuing on and seeing how we can build those networks to make that happen. Um, short term there's a lot of people talking that they'd like to see me run for some positions I'm considering it I, I like the idea uh, of being united with our with our constituents and if they find a need and they, if they trust me enough then then that's what I'm gonna want to do you know to be able to represent as best as I can um, and we'll take it from there all right and the last question is please just speak to the audience those are Bernie supporters those are Hillary supporters uh, your comments well what I would like to say is please don't commit to an idea as of yet. Please do not vote out of fear because that is not, that's not what's going to save us and get us to the next step. I think we have to stay true to our positions, our policies and the things that we value and seeing what we can do to get there. Um, so I hope that you uh, get educated and really research these things and research what things that have been that are being said now and where they stood, you know, only a few months ago and see, see what we need to do and who we need to support to get there. Please, it's a long road to November. Thank you very much. Thank you.